wanna get high, man. That stimulates your mind. Get up, Chucky! What have we got here? A fucking comedian. Hey, Rojan Kim. Hello. Welcome to the Rojan Kim cast. It's me, Rojan Kim. Thank you so much for joining me on this, um, I don't know, August day. It's an August day. August Osage County, August Orange County. I don't know. I'm just just saying words at this point. I don't mean that's today. I'm going to talk about Orange County <laughs> for one hour. Um, Orange County. I don't know a lot about it, except that it is a, uh, I guess, typically red area, red Republican it's suburban. It's the suburbs. It's very, it's, I mean, white is a cliche, but if you've seen the OC, the TV show, everybody's white, you know, so there you go. It reflects reality, just like girls uh, reflected Greenpoint of having um, the Greenpoint Brooklyn, of course, uh, it portrayed it as having no black people at all, which I, I live there. And um, I mean, that's not true. So it's really weird that that would be your fantasy. It's some strange, actually, it's like a strange liberal white supremacist fantasy of what Brooklyn <laughs> should look like. It's like a guilt-free Brooklyn. It's like if we would just, if we could just get rid of the pesky black people, then we'd feel so much better. Uh, also missing from Greenpoint were all the drunk Polish people who uh, in the parks because they hang out, you know, they would hang out in the park McCarran Park, which is where I used to live by. And if there's one thing about that park that, um, besides there being lots of black people, uh, one thing you could count on is that there being an ambulance carting away a uh, Polish person, uh, most likely a Polish man, uh, you know, carting away a Polish man because of alcohol poisoning. That was sort of like a really common thing every time. Every, I mean, almost every morning walking my dog to the park, I'd see an ambulance and a group of old Polish dudes just being like, ah, and then one just on the ground, face down, right? And paramedics just like putting him in, they're just like, ah, and then they slowly are like, you know, dispersing before the cops come, which um, I guess, I don't know, public drinking is the crime there, I guess, I don't know. Um, anyways, reality, that's something, huh? What a concept, right? Uh, reality is, of course, crafted by the crafters the media makers right the people who craft things i mean we have different levels of reality right i keep talking about like concentric circles uh you know you have the level in front of your face but then you have this sort of interpersonal level and then you have the outer level the whole world right and uh who knows what's going on i don't really know um it does feel like what is going on though is uh we're in a perpetual state of war right we're just always uh, in America, at least, it seems that we're always on war, uh, on some kind of war, war on terror, war on drugs. There's been a war on poverty. We're going to have a war, I guess, on hate. We're going to have a war on hate. We're going to get rid of hate. We're going to go out there and root out all the hate. We're going to round up all the haters, the, the racists, the people who are anti-Semitic, the people who are homophobic and transphobic and all the phobics, Islamophobics, like all the phobics. We're going to put them all into a camp, I guess, <laughs> some kind, re-educate them and re-educate the ones that can be re-educated, who will admit, you know, who will confess, who will admit their sins and they can be cleansed and be reintroduced into society. And then of course there will be the irredeemables, the ones that, um, the deplorables perhaps, the ones that are expendable, um, what other movies could they be? Um, anyways, The Incredibles. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, they could be all kinds of things. But what I'm saying here is that, you know, we should root out. Let's root them all out. People have hate in their hearts. If you hate anybody, maybe it's not enough to be racist or sexist. It's not enough. If, if you hate anyone at all, if you have any hatred in your heart, you will be rooted out. Okay? We hate haters. We hate hate. Okay, we, that's what we hate. The only thing that's acceptable to hate is hate. And when you find someone with hate, you could take them, you could string them up in a tree and you could poke a, a spear at them. You could like, like Jesus, I guess, or you could, I don't know, who has a spear? <laughs> who has a spear? So yeah, you could stab him, stab him in the belly, stab him in the belly and pull his innards out. And that's okay. You can do that to somebody who hates, okay? Because that's the only people that it's appropriate, you know, to hate are people who hate. 
and you could do anything you want to somebody filled with hate. You could hold them down and you can tie their legs to a plank and you can basically just start inserting things, whatever you want. It's all game. It's all game because you're fighting hate. And anything you do in the name of fighting hate, including forcible, forced sodomy, forcibly jamming objects up the rectum of somebody who commits hate, that's okay. That's in the name of good, okay? So anything you do to combat hate is not hate. It's actually love, and you're doing it out of love. So you have to go into it as a lover, as you ram whatever object you, it's, that's up to you. There's many different objects you could ram up there. There's a, in front of me right now, I see a pen, this microphone, uh, that camera. You know, there's many things I could just ram just up someone's ass. It, that, but that's a, a choice thing. That's a choice thing. But it's all in the name of fighting hate. So it's good, whatever it is you decide to do. You could just, you could take a knife and stick it up. You could take a knife and just jam it up, just jam it up, just not even like, don't even look, don't even look and just willy nilly cut up that hater, cut up that hater soft undercarriage, you know, like just cut it up and let all these tubes fly out. You don't even, that's, it's all good. It's all in the name of good and it's fine. You should be at peace that the Lord is watching you do good and that the Lord will forgive you um, for any, I mean, he doesn't need to. So do you understand? I mean, you should be forgiven for having that thought. That's the sin. The sin right there is thinking that you're sinning by destroying hatred when all you're doing is the Lord's work, okay? So please, whatever it is you do to combat hate, it's fine, right? Because that's where we're at. We're in a we're in a war. We're in a war between good and evil, guys. That's where, where we're at. Where it's it's a it's a war between um, the woke versus the broke. I guess I don't know. <laughs> it's like uh, it's a it's a, there's a continuous war going on. And I think that's something that is um, I guess it's part of the human condition if you really think about it. Because survival sort of made it necessary for to have a warlike mentality, you know, us versus them. But I think America in particular has a really nice sort of um, like marketing aspect to the whole thing. You know what I mean? Like America's uh, creation was about ideals like freedom, right? Freedom, liberty. And of course we recognize contradiction of uh, like George Carlin said, America being slave owners who wanted to be free, right? Um, the New York Times decided to take that joke premise and create an entire thing called the 1619 Project, which is sort of all about trying to say how like um, the foundation of America was about trying to maintain slaves, which I think is, I don't know, it's kind of up to, it's disputable. I mean, you could see economically why that works out, but the, um, you know, the, the whole idea is that Britain was going to abolish slavery. So America decided to become independent in order to maintain slavery, right? So it's sort of the up ending this idea that America was a revolt against tyranny from the crown and a revolt against the divine right of kings and more against a, a more sort of like a pro uh, slavery pro you know this sort of I guess it's, it's like so they're kind of saying that the empire the British Empire which had the divine right of kings also is recognizing universal human rights and so America as the backwards colony it was not about recognizing this new way of governing ourselves uh, like a representative democracy against the r rule of kings it's actually a sort of backward step from the human rights that the divine rule of kings was bringing into a more like warlord slave like past it's kind of like you know what i mean like in some ways you can see that it's like it's a step backwards that's what the 1619 project and people like that who are saying that the foundations of american um history are really rooted in trying to maintain slavery um 
Uh, I don't know. I mean, how do, I think that one of the things that you get into trouble is, is like, you can't really, um, you can't really like speculate as to what people were thinking back then and be completely accurate, you know, because it's like you have no way of looking at these things except through the lens of yourself in this time and place. You have no idea what it was like back then. And, you know, I mean, I, you could, you could guess, I think there's, it's, there's ways of sort of deducing what were these people doing? And especially when you look at their actions, right? Like, you know, I've brought up Bacon's Rebellion, right? Bacon's Rebellion. Was that in 1620? That was in the 1600s. Anyways, you know, that was in Virginia. You got yourselves a slave revolt of a white and black slaves who decided to kill a bunch of Indians because they were being bothered by them and then turn around and turn on the masters and the masters put them down. Okay. And that's, that's the old story. And then afterwards the house of Burgesses decided that they would let white slaves become citizens and black slaves could not. That was, that was, and who's to say what they were thinking? What were these crazy guys thinking, making a rule like that? Why would they do that? I mean, but I think you could deduce that it, given the nature of the revolt, that uh, it was a multiracial revolt that the ruling class creating a law that would allow there to be a division between the ruled, the slave class, or what became known as like, you know, blacks became slaves and whites became indentured servants, right? Um, divide and conquer, right? Divide and conquer. You could also see that part of that divide and conquer is the sweet marketing aspect of freedom, liberty, especially a promise to the poor the poorest of the poor white man to say, hey, at least you'll be free. <laughs> like you might be poor and under our thumb, but at least you'll be free, right? You won't be a slave, right? You, um, and so you can see that, yes, there's the contradiction of like liberty versus slavery versus, you know, tyranny versus economics you got all these things going head to head and and to say that ah it's all because of um the maintenance of slavery and that's even though i don't know even though i think that was hotly debated uh i think it was obvious that it was hotly debated i don't really know the truth i mean it's very possible that yeah okay the foundations of this whole country is just a big sham and it was all just to make um keep slavery i just have no idea why they would have fought a war over it later but whatever okay whatever it doesn't matter it doesn't matter you see the whole idea is that there is um this continuous battle going on right? It's continuous conflict, this the Hegelian sort of point of view and this Marxist point of view, right? Uh, of a uh, constant struggle. This is a Maoist thing of like constant struggle. The cultural revolution was brought about because he thought that his society, the, you know, following the great leap forward, which led to a famine that killed almost a hundred million people or something, 80 million, something crazy like that. Uh, Mao decided, you know what? The country is getting decadent. And the reason because of that is because there's no more revolution. So we need another revolution. Let's get another one going. So basically like 15 years after the last revolution where they kicked out the uh, nationalists under Chiang Kai-shek, you know, beat the Japanese, you know, and got what they would call China, right? China proper, like uh, an entire country, uh, Mao decided, hey, we should just do it all over again. To up, everything needs to just be fucking, he just flipped the table over. So he was just like, everybody who's in power now who got into power because they fought the revolution, all those people in power are corrupt. And now it's time to depose them. And guess what? The people who deposed them were the kids of the people that the people in power deposed before. See, does that does that make sense? You know what I'm saying? Like the incoming commies deposed all these like nationalist, um, you know, pro-nationalist people and they got purged, right? But then their kids, when it came time during the Cultural Revolution to take over from the people in power who are these commies, they rose up. So the kids of the people they took over, whose positions they took over, rose up to take them out because that's just the nature of revenge, right? It was just really human revenge. That's really what it is. It's just an opportunity to take back what you think is yours, which is what the first guy did. So everybody just thinks that this is mine, they take it, and then somebody else will be like, "How you did that to my dad, and then you come and take it. You understand? Okay, I may have gotten off track a little bit, but my point here is that, yes, just like the Cultural Revolution, just like, you know, we're in this sort of constant state of struggle, right? Um, but I don't think it's like, it's not, 
I wouldn't say it is the cultural revolution. You know, we don't have struggle sessions in the streets. We don't have actual purges. We don't have, it's not anything in that. Everything is kind of, it's in this LARPing D and D way, which is, of course, again, is America's conceit. You know, that's our, even though England uh, created Dungeons and Dragons, America took it to the next level, just like a bunch of Koreans, right? Just like the Chinese do. <laughs> they, they took an invention from the old world and then just fucking just ran with it. You know what I'm saying? They just fucking just ran with it. So America, I feel like, took the ideas, the ideas coming forth, created by the British, really, created by this system of European colonialism, right? This idea of like white people, black people, like beyond class, that there was race, that the race was like a real thing. They made race into an actual like character class right you know like it just they turned it into a real tangible thing they even fought a whole you know war over it they fought it you know everything was phrased in terms of black and white you know in this country civil war you know it's all about slavery you know it's like it's 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 all you know it's all sort of like a way of creating identities right that go beyond say class say you wanted a bunch of people to rise up like mao like in china you know say you wanted the underclass to rise up and overthrow the ruling class and have a new society and all of that what's that going to take huh it's going to take an entire um basically the largest section of the population the poor right it's going to take them to rise up you know because as long as they're kept under uh, lock and key and sort of that's what the middle class is supposed to be right that's sort of the there it, it's sort of like a step in between the ruling class and lower class to be like hey you guys could you guys could still like make your way up the ladder one day you could be a bill gates you know high school dropouts become billionaires it's, it's complete you know that's something that just couldn't happen in other countries in england or wherever you know there's a real strict class thing but america that's where we could just break it all down we could break it all and one of the ways to break down that those ancient barriers of class was by using race by saying hey look if you're white you fucking sky's the limit sky's the limit right i mean if you're black man so if you're anything else sorry but if you're white you know fuck class right classes were gone you could be a king every white man could be a king right and that was sort of the promise that was extended um, and extended from beyond white man to white woman to black man to black woman to so on and so so every man and every woman they're like you know what every man every woman every man is sexual orientation doesn't even matter whatever you think whatever you think whatever you think it's all part of the universal human dignity the universal human rights that we all stand for right so that's that was the entire thing about this country was that we were coming up with a philosophical um, sort of like structure to have a society that wasn't based on God, uh, you know, some kind of divine right of kings, that wasn't based on some uh, form of despotism or tyranny, you know, might makes right. It was essentially, uh, yeah, we're going we're gonna to come up with this idea that like there's rights, there's universal rights, there's actual rights, and it's not that god gives them to you it's not that the law that it that they're natural okay it's not ordained by anybody it isn't the state that gives you your rights it's you have the rights you have the rights and if the state doesn't um let you exercise your rights you have every right to overthrow the state that was the premise of the revolution right which of course you can see the seeds of the civil war there Right, because then the underlying contradiction is like, yeah, we got these slaves, got to do something about it. You could see why that kind of went the way it did, right? And yes, economics, all that aside, it's kind of hard to say that all of the foundation of this country is just because of economics, right? Like, I think there was a philosophical bent to it. I think that was part of what. I mean, maybe it was a scam. Maybe it was a scam, but I think it would, you, you got to believe the scam in some ways. I mean, if, if it was a total scam, why, how could I be here talking to you <laughs> in English after they bombed the shit out of my parents' country? Like, how could I have grown up here? You know, why isn't, why, how is, how is it that we are where we are if it is as bad as they say? If we were truly, if it's truly just been a fascist dictatorship from the beginning because of slavery and so on and so forth, why aren't we all dead? Why aren't we all in camps? I mean, Okay, so the Native Americans are, <laughs> and maybe everybody's next. Maybe that means it a thousand-year plan. I don't know. Anyways, I think it's like 
what this divide and conquer strategy has now become is just like marketing. It's just marketing now, right? Um, that's just something, uh, I think Kurt Metzger was talking about that or in his podcast about how like, it's just dividing people up into little categories, right? And now we're dragged into this fake war, which is also sort of executed through a false dichotomy, right? Like everything's on this like blue, red, left, right. What, you know, the, the, everything is like Coke or Pepsi, right? Everything about Android, Apple, everything's like, you know, because of this division, you're sort of, you have to pick a side. And if you're not on one side, you're on the other side. And then there is two sides. And then uh, but really it's just like a self-perpetuating, uh, you know, pro wrestling type KFAB, right? Like that's all it is. It's just like, it's just the thing that's, uh, they call it a self-licking ice cream cone, right? It's just a perpetual motion machine, right? You got, you got one side, you got the other. And maybe some of you are like, no, no, there are clear distinctions between these sides. You know, these sides, these are one side is good and one side is bad. And you don't find that interesting. You do, you think the other side goes, yeah, we're bad and they're good. No, they think they're good and you're bad. You know, it, it seems to be a very convenient way of looking at the world, right? Very... Um, sort of easy story to tell that those those people are the bad ones we're the good ones and then just like i was saying in the name of hate you can do anything to anybody in the name of hate you can do in the name of fighting hate you can do anything to anybody in the name of being good right i mean and trust me that's how you get nazis right nazis didn't go yeah we're evil yeah we're evil you're going to kill the youth no it's like they thought they were good See, they thought they were doing a good thing for their country. They felt that they were doing a good thing for the Aryan race. They thought that whatever the fight, they, they thought they were good. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's the thing. We think we're good. That's the thing, you know? And we say, oh, like, you know, what? what oh, it, it's just like, but we're the good guys. You know, how could this happen? You know, when 9 11, how, how could this happen to us? You know, we're the good guys. What, what did we do? How could, how, 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 why? Why? No. Right. And then whenever ever there's a tragedy in an America, like, how many Americans died? Wow. We got to know, you know, that's it's so terrible. What happened to these Americans? <laughs> right. Like it, it's a, uh, it's a double standard of life that we have. We have American exceptionalism, right? You have this idea that we're better than everybody. So it's, it's like right now, what's the coronavirus count deaths? 160,000. Remember like there's 160,000. That's more than people died in world war one. That's more than the twice than the died in Vietnam, you know? And it's like, without mentioning in the same breath that like, we're, we're in a 20 year war now. What about that? How many, what about, what about how many Iraqis we killed? How about that? How many, it's actually about one tenth the amount of Iraqis we killed. We should just do it that way. Why don't we see? Why are we always telling bad news, right? Everybody, it's always the case count, whatever you know. Oh, it's always compared to like this is how many Americans die. You know, that's that's fucked up. That's that's exceptional exceptionalism right there. That's like saying to the world that like, oh, we think our lives are better than yours. We don't care about the million million plus Iraqis that are killed because we just decided to go to the Middle East because of WMDs that don't exist. Uh, you know, never mind that. Let's talk about how many have died. Okay. Oh, the deaths. Oh, it's, 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 you know, it's such a tragedy. All these people that have died so far, 160,000. Did you know that uh, 50,000 people die of no health care every year? So out of that 160,000, I'm sure 50,000, those 50,000 are in there. You know, there's a Venn diagram of the two, I'm sure. Right. But 50,000, that's just from not having health care. That's not even from a disease. It doesn't even matter what they got. It doesn't matter, just 50,000 of them. So in about three years, that's the same amount of people that died this year of coronavirus, okay? We don't, we don't care about the, how many years have we gone without healthcare? Many years. Uh, you, you know what else? Uh, smoking. We really care about deaths. What about 500,000 deaths from smoking? Now, that's not the same. You're like, this is a disease. You know, smoking is not a disease. Smoking doesn't kill people around them, but there is secondhand smoke. I mean, there, are, there, are, there is collateral damage to smoking. I mean, it is a known killing machine. It is a known, you know, it's a known thing that causes death, just like cars. Cars cause death. You know, these are all things that people have brought up as analogs. And then people go, well, it's not the same because of this and this and this. And yes, we're not saying it's the same. What we're talking about is the deaths. We're talking about all oh, these deaths, the people who are dying, the people who are deaths. Meanwhile, we're in seven wars. Do you understand that? We got seven wars going on. Do you understand how many sanctions we have? Do you know, do you know what sanctions mean? Sanctions means starving babies. Do you understand? We just starve babies. 
that's okay. We've been doing it for almost 20 years. I mean, we've been doing it for longer than that. I mean, we've honestly, for, with Iraq, we've been sanctioning Iraq since forever. You know, they would lift that after we bombed the shit out of them. Great. But now we sanction Iran. And now we sanction Venezuela. We sanction North Korea. We sanction all these other countries, right? Starving babies. That's what that is. We also, not only do we starve the babies, we bomb them. We bomb the babies. Bombing, you know, there's collateral damage just from... You know, the, you know the statistics have you ever heard them the something for like every drone strike it's like a 98 percent 98 percent of the people killed are innocent civilians and the two percent are the targets you know what i mean so for like 100 people 98 of them are like just standing there and then they're rarely going for like one or two guys there that that's what we do how many of them are kids i mean you know what i mean shrapnel flying all around f- flying all around fucking weddings hospitals and fucking Okay, so yeah, we starve babies, we bomb them, and guess that? Guess what else? We fuck them. We fuck the babies too. The babies are just being fucked. There's a global pedophile ring going on. That's we sort of peeked under the covers during the pandemic and just went, we don't want, ah, we don't want to. We we're like Epstein, Maxwell. All right, ah, I love you. We don't want Chris Andrew. Eh, it's fine. We don't want to. <sighs> Things are bad enough. 160,000 people dead. We don't need this global pedophile ring. We don't need to. We don't need to talk about it, please. But that's what's going on. And it's not just the global billionaire pedophile ring there's the catholic church there's uh penn state there's a i mean there's everywhere hollywood it's everywhere it's everywhere there's no conspiracy it's just uh people really like fucking kids and the rich and powerful get away with it and there you go that's basically it there's no crazy i know it's like there's a lot of conspiracies and stuff about like the cyber satan about like the interdimensional vampire stealing the innocent blood and all that stuff but you know what it's just people are cruel you know what I mean? People get off on being cruel. People have been um, people have been cruel to other people as children, and those children grow up to be cruel to other children, so on and so forth. And that's pretty. That's 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 it. I mean, there's probably a lot we can look into there. You know, like why why are they so crazy and cruel? Like why does this happen? But um, but bottom line, that's what it is. You know, just like earlier I was talking about, it's like hard to like go into the minds of people in the past, right? To know, you know, it's it's not easy to go into the mind of somebody who decides to fuck a kid. You know, well, you got your starve a kid, bomb a kid, and then fuck a kid, right? And I feel like, wow, of all three things, at least the fucking is like personal. At least there's some interpersonal contact. I mean, if it, I don't know, I I mean, I can't really rank which one is better. They're all pretty bad, but if I had to rank, them i guess fucking they're still alive uh they're not starving to death there's just it's this is a very grim grim worse than sophie's choice this is worse than sophie's choice okay this is i don't know i didn't know there could be a worse choice than sophie's and here it is right what would you rather happen to your baby according to american foreign policy would you rather they be starved bombed or fucked okay that's these are the choices we have that's what we do that's what that's our bread and butter and on the on the in the same breath, we're like, Ellen is mean. Ellen is so mean. <laughs> Ellen is mean to a fat kid. That's a breaking news. Ellen was mean in seventh grade to a fat kid. <laughs> Ellen, right? Like Ellen, who like fucking. <sighs> I mean, Ellen. God bless her. One of the best uh, female stand-up comics, right? Came out as a lesbian, right? Really like, put herself out there on a limb. She just shit on. And, you know, maybe that turns you. Maybe in order to be a mogul in Hollywood as a white lady lesbian, it, you got to be hard. You think you got to be all nice and, hey, yeah, and I know, I get it. She's out there dancing and dancing. And she's about, but you think people would like her if she was the hard-ass person she needed to succeed? Like, no, it's the dancing people like, and then she's behind the scenes to keep it all running. She has to be a fucking bitch, okay? Then that's just, that's just how it is. That's just how it is, all right? Which is exactly, you, th- you think that's cruel? Look at what we do with the babies. That's what we did. But nobody cares about the babies. It's about the Ellen. The Ellen. Ellen needs to be, Ellen needs to be nicer, right? And it's basically the same thing with Trump, right? The, the president needs to be nicer. Ellen needs to be nicer. You know, Ellen needs to do blah, blah, blah. Um, Ellen needs to be nicer, but nobody really cares that she's cool with 
George W. Bush, right? Because George W. Bush is now cool with Michelle Obama. Remember, they gave candy to each other and stuff, and Ellen's watching hockey with W. And it's just, they're just palling around, you know, with war criminals, you know, a guy who had a torture program going. And to be fair, maybe he didn't know it was going, but whatever. is The guy is under his watch. President, another president, we tortured people, right? Under the next president, we stopped the torture, but then he was like, yeah, well, we tortured some folks, you know? And that's that's what happens when you have a president you like, right? Yeah, we tortured some folks. And then his wife is now buddies with the guys who tortured some folks. And then here we are saying Ellen is mean. Ellen is mean. Abu Ghraib never happened. <laughs> Okay, Ellen. Ellen needs to be nicer. I mean, yeah, we do. Yes, we have black sites still. Probably, our current head of the CIA, Gina Haspel, has definitely destroyed evidence, videotaped evidence of torture. She's destroyed it, which is probably illegal in and of itself. You probably shouldn't do that. I mean, nobody will serve any jail time for the torture that we did. Anyways, Ellen is very mean. Okay, so this is where we're at. You know. This is where we're at, right? We ignore the thing we do and the thing we have done, not just for 20 years. I mean, my whole life, right? I mean, ever the, my entire being comes out of the goddamn Cold War, right? If I can, the, the same old regime changing, same old meddling that you do that, that the American Empire and other empires have done in, uh, you know, in Korea and then all the other, all these other countries now, you know, all the other seven countries right now and many more that, you know, we have no idea about all this manipulation and stuff. Um, you know, and meanwhile, we're supposed to believe there's only two sides. There's only two sides to everything. There's only good and bad, right? There's only hate that's bad. You know, the blue side that's good, the red side is bad. Or if you're on the other side, it's the other way around. You know, one side's good, one side's bad. Everything is dichotomy. Bush, in fact, was the one who doubled down on the, I gotta stop saying double down, uh, you know, on the dichotomy, right? When you said there's good, they hate us for our freedom, you know, there's good and evil. And if you're either with them or you're either with us or with them, or, you know, it's that whole mentality, that cowboy. Western mentality, black hat, white hat, we're all the good guys with the white hat. We're all, you know, and here we are 20 years from there looking at ourselves in the mirror and what we see is Trump reeling with the idea that there are over a million dead people under our belts, refugees going left and right all over. There's a crisis, huge refugee crisis. Why? Because we bombed the shit out of their countries. Why? You know, uh, I don't know, because the war machine must go on, right? All that shit going on. And meanwhile, here we are fighting each other over who's mean, who's not. Fighting each other over the right words, the wrong words. Fighting each other over who to vote for, don't vote, whatever. Wear a mask, don't wear a mask. You know, these dichotomies. Coke, Pepsi, Android, Apple. God damn it, you know. Um, and all of this goes back to the yin-yang, god damn it. Yin-yang, right? Same but different. Right, you and I were the same but different, different but same, and then round and round we go. It's a fucking three thousand year old Chinese stoner. Okay, that's we haven't gone any farther than this. We we still can't get past that. We still can't get over the fact that like that there is no separation between us and them. I mean, there is and there isn't. Right, and. That's what we got to get over. And instead, we've built a lot of cool stuff. We got all this stuff. We got we can shoot laser beams. We could fucking fire a fucking probe to Pluto or some shit. You know, like we could do stuff, but it's all sort of in this physical material realm. It's like beyond that, we haven't really figured out like what else is there? What are we supposed to be doing? Or what's the point of all of this, right? Besides accumulating stuff. I mean, that's all we got. And that's where we're at. And um, I guess, you know, you know what? I'd like to accumulate followers. So, hey, follow me on Instagram. Follow me on Twitter. Thank you for listening. Um, I, uh, I don't know. I just trailed off there. I, I thought I had an announcement, but what I was like, <laughs> I don't have dates. I don't have dates. I don't know. I'm just doing this. I got, you know, I got, I got a life. I got a life I'm trying to live. I know you are as well. I think, if anything, despite the fact that we are made to fight, that we are in a state of perpetual war, that we are woke and broke at the same time, that we are the woken versus the broken, right? Um, despite that, I think life is good, right? 
I mean, I can appreciate how nice a day it is. I can appreciate the fact that I'm not starving or trying to uh, kill somebody or have somebody or somebody's trying to kill me. You know, there's no killing involved in my life. You know, that's that's good. Um, yeah, I have love in my life. That's good. I have a dog. Nice. Very nice. Uh, I have a iPhone that I use to look up any piece of information I want and then jerk off, you know, like that. That's great. So I have a lot of things to be thankful for. You know, um, I'm so happy that I wasn't born a hundred years ago, uh, because what, <laughs> what, 1920, what, what would I be able to do? Just fucking wash dishes or clothes, just washing related occupations, just an angry washer of things. That's all I could do. So for all those reasons, I'm very grateful and um, thank you. And I'm grateful for you guys watching and listening. So thank you. And until next time. Bye.